Hello and welcome back to River Bronze, the pursuit of a 20. In this series, my goal is to become a better river smallmouth bass fisherman, and at the same time, the series doesn't end until I successfully land a 20-incher. Let's get started. Couple things before we get started. Number one, I broke my own rule. Remember last time when I talked about how I'm gonna try to bring only three rods most trips? Well, I brought four today. I wanna go down here, fish this bridge, and then once I'm done fishing the bridge, I'm actually gonna come back this way and I'm gonna head downstream. I'm starting with a topwater. I'm not sure if the smallmouth are gonna be crushing a topwater yet or not, but I've got a whopper plopper on. The other super unfortunate thing that is going on is I tried to go to McDonald's and grab a cheap coffee before I came out here and they weren't open, so that's kind of lame. So now I'm gonna go without caffeine today, which is probably okay, but it's gonna take me a minute to wake up. If I'm being 100% honest with you, um, between episode one and today, I actually did try to get out on the river one other time, and unfortunately it was not very good fishing. Now I only had like a couple hours I was fishing after work, and I just think the area I chose was not very good. That's kind of part of fishing though, you know, especially with like river fishing, like you're gonna have to try different stretches of river. Um, and you know, sometimes you're gonna pick uh, bad areas and that's what happened last time. There he is. Okay, small mouth will hit top water and that one shook it, it. It was only like a 12 incher, but that'll show you. Smallmouth bass, my friends, they love to jump and they are good at shaking a hook. Gosh dang it. Oh man, that might actually be a good fish and I ever get a hook set in on him. I cast it up there and I was repositioning my kayak and this guy just kind of takes off with it and I just barely hooked him. There we go. I'm not going to use my net, it's too much work. All right. Oh man. First I thought this was going to be a nice fish, but he's just kind of a short fat guy. But I'll tell you what, we're on the board. Feels good. It ain't much, but we're on the board. He's really fat. He's a bruiser. See ya bud. Just using that little like weedless Texas rig jig and a uh, little yum dinger four inch. John Dalton from Creek Fishing Adventures is totally the motivation for this rig. Well, I'm just gonna start heading downstream. That was kind of where I primarily wanted to fish today anyways. Upstream was not really worth a hoot, but that's how you learn. You gotta try. There's another one. Yeah, there we go. All right, I think we may have just wanted to slow down with the, uh, the little dinger rig. Oh, that's actually a largemouth. He was kind of dark, so he looked like a smallie there at first when he was jumping. But the, uh, the little finesse rig right here is paying off, not with size, but with fish. And that is okay with me. All right, good. Well, they might be like more bottom oriented. You know, I tried the topwater for quite a while and it just you know, I had the one bite, so it kind of gave me uh, high hopes. But I probably don't want to get too distracted by the top water just over one little bite. Oh yeah. Oh shoot. One cranked this thing, pulled the hook out of his mouth. That was weird. That was like a strange bite. He like bobbed it once and then hammered it. And then I don't know why I pulled the hook out of his mouth though. Yeah, another one of those. Another fish where I look down and I feel a fish and uh, 
I was adjusting my kayak, so I had a bunch of slack in my line again. I really need to be more prepared. Fortunately, I'm able to improvise, get a hook set, and I uh, still pin that fish. Well, it's a little bit bigger than the first smallmouth, but he's nothing uh, special by any means. Probably about a 14 inch or so. I really pinned him for having not gotten much of a hook set. See you later, buddy. Whew, that tail kick. All right, now that might be my sign that I just need to stick with this here yum dinger. I threw the crankbait for a few minutes, didn't get squat. I think I made two casts with the yum dinger and I already got another fish. Needless to say, the river has been kicking my butt today. That being said, I'm gonna treat the back half of my day like an entirely new fishing trip. I left the yum dinger rigged up because that's the only thing I've caught fish on, but everything else I've re-rigged. I'm gonna change my style, I'm gonna have a positive attitude, I'm gonna stay confident, and I trust we're gonna catch some fish. There's no way that I'm not a round fish. The question is, how do I make them bite? I'm gonna make that happen right now. Let's get back to it. Oh, one came up and hit the fluke. One came up and hit the fluke. I don't know why I set the hook like an absolute idiot. There's a bite. Oh, he doesn't have it. Gosh, dang it. Might be a small fish. All right, let's just immediately go to the dinger. Probably a small fish. Okay, two bites on the fluke within about eight minutes. Not bad. Oh, there's a bite. There he's got it. Okay, kind of as I suspected. Oh, it was a rock bass. Oh, it's a rock bass with a lamprey on him there. Lamprey let go. Oh my gosh, that was weird. Okay, I wonder if this is what just hit the, uh, hit the fluke. And looky there, he's got that lamprey on him. He, he pulled off when I was landing the fish, but you can see he's got that mark on him. Poor rock bass, but look, he looks healthy otherwise, nice and fat. See ya, bud. Well, I've been making my way down this bank and just turned off the camera and uh, got a little largemouth on the little fluke there. I'm just trying to cover more water and find something that looks a little bit more productive, but happy to catch this guy on a slow day like today. That's more like it. I put my head cam away for a few minutes to try to conserve battery and there you go. That's a respectable smallmouth right there. And I don't know, I could be wrong. I felt like this fish might be on a bed because it was kinda, it bumped it a few times before taking it down. Took a couple pitches before I got it to eat. So I'm not sure, I don't see a beat up tail or anything. So I'm not 100% sure, but it was kind of acting like a bedding fish though. Well, it's certainly no 20 inches, so I'm just gonna send it back. Probably about a 16 and a half. Man, that felt good. It's been a slow day all day. I've busted my butt and ultimately it was this little like Berkeley creature bait. It's like a, just like a bulky little profile. I think it's around three and a half, four inches. Um, just like a little crayfish type thing. And uh, I just kind of liked it. I saw it online and I was like, wow, that kind of looks like what I'm looking for. So picked it up and it uh, worked. Similar profile to a tube, but it has little claws on the back and they flap. So anyways, I rigged that up, flipped it around on the Texas rig and got one. Thank goodness. Unfortunately, it's too murky to see if there's any kind of like bed. I don't see anything. So who knows? But there was one fish sitting up on the rocks and willing to eat a crawfish. So as far as I'm concerned, there should be another along this riprap bank.
There's a bite. Get him. Ah, it's not a very big one. Is that a large mouth? That's a large mouth. Pretty sure this is the fish that just short striked me. There we go. A little largey. That's gonna happen when you're flipping around. I tell you what, I am absolutely exhausted. I have covered a ton of water. I've tried so many things. I've fished shallow, I've fished semi-deep, I've fished around rock, I've fished around wood, I've fished in current, I've fished outside of current, I've fished top water, I've fished bottom, I've fished finesse, I've fished power. I have tried it all, my friends, and I feel like I have not gotten on very many fish. And I really don't feel like I've learned a lot. The only thing that I really feel like I've learned is that I've eliminated quite a bit of water for the day, but the, the frustrating part about that is the fact that River conditions are constantly changing. And so if you eliminate water one day, that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna eliminate it you know, a week or two down the road because conditions will change and fish are gonna change with those. So I think that's the really intimidating part about this series is you know, trying to learn river smallmouth. I feel like this is gonna be a very long-term project, right? Whether or not this thing goes five videos or 20 videos, it doesn't really matter. I think ultimately, it's not gonna come overnight and I need to accept that and I need to be okay with that. And I trust that, uh, you know, over time I'm gonna continue to learn more and more. But at the end of the day, I really do think that river systems are so complex. And so I'm excited for the future, but today I'm honestly feeling kind of sad. I feel like I, I didn't feel like I got a key learning. I didn't feel like I ever dialed in a pattern and um, that's okay. But anyways, I'm gonna fish my way back to the ramp. You never know, maybe we'll land a big one in between now and then. Um, kind of doubted at this point but either way thanks so much for watching make sure to stay tuned i trust we're gonna get on some big ones here in the future just gonna take some time my friends nothing comes easy we'll catch you next time